And we cut some firewood down the other day uh, across the road. Nice big hemlock tree that was dead there. I cut it up into logs and yarded them out, brought them up into the yard, and I sawed uh, most of them up into firewood. But these hemlock trees have great big gnarly branches on them. Some of them anywhere six, eight, ten inches in diameter, and and uh, they're really hard, dense wood. Uh, and they make good firewood, especially for uh, putting in the stove overnight round problem with them are is, is that they're so gnarly that they're kind of hard to uh, stack and hard to fit in the stove. Uh, you got to cut them into odd shapes and stuff. But So anyway, all those branches are laying down there over the bank where the tree was. Got my son and granddaughter to go down there and drag those uh, branches up out of there so we can uh, cut them up and use them for firewood. And they were pulling a few of them out by hand at a uh, pretty steep bank there in snow. And my son decided that it might be a good time to get this uh, chainsaw winch out and use it. I haven't had it out for 10 or 15 years, so I didn't know whether it was going to run or not. I told him he could get it out and fool with it if he wanted to, and so he got it down off the shelf. He did, I managed to get the saw started. So this is a, a Lewis winch uh, made in Oregon, a chainsaw mounted winch. And I always thought they were just kind of a high-priced toy. I never thought much about them, but about 25 years ago, I went moose hunting with a friend of mine, and, and he shot a big moose back in the muskeg in the timber, and he had one of these set up, and we hooked on to it, and he drug that moose out. It I was pretty impressed with the way it worked, so I went and got one. Of course, I've never gone moose hunting since then, but I have used it to skid out some some trees and stuff. When I got it, I uh, mounted it up to my uh, McCulloch 1010 and I thought that would be a, a good little saw to put on that. It just turned out that it just wasn't enough saw. The little 54cc uh, uh, McCulloch 1010 just wouldn't effectively operate this winch. I had a uh, Skvarna 480 and I didn't want to put it on the winch because uh, I use it for cutting firewood and and milling and stuff like that and so I had this uh, a McCulloch Super Pro 81 that I got from a neighbor kind of inherited it from a neighbor when he passed away the family couldn't get it running and they brought it over to me to get it uh, see if I could get it running and I did get it running but at the time it, I decided that it needed a carburetor kit and a couple other things and so they were just going to throw it away and they just left it with me so I had it kicking around there and so it's kind of hard to start, hard to keep running, but it does run, and or it did run at the time. Surprisingly enough, uh, it needed a carburetor kit then, and at that point in time, that was before eBay and uh, McCulloch's aren't aren't real weren't real popular anymore back then in the early 90s, and so I couldn't figure out where to get a kit or the parts I needed for that. So it still needs a carburetor kit, which I have kits for them now, so I could probably put one in it, but. Uh, it'll run. And then we need a little bit of work on the winch. Now the 1010 on there uh, just wasn't big enough uh, for that winch. It, uh, it would reel it in and stuff but it just wouldn't pull anything with it. And I bought that 1010 new in uh, I think 1975 and I was always kind of disappointed with it. I went into the store and bought it. Uh, I'd been used to running uh, big McCulloch's. I ran big ones from the uh, early 60s. I ran an I-76 when I got older and 740 and the 797 was pretty much mine from 1967 until 1970 when I left home and then dad had uh, had the big saws and when these little saws uh, we called them the little saws and they started coming out he bought those and started with the 610 and 710 and and uh, so I grew up with the 710 and had uh, whatever the 80cc plus saw was. I think it was an 800 or an 850. And I used to borrow those. But he was busy with them when I needed them one time. So I went and bought a 1010. And my logic at the time was if a 6, 710 was bigger than a 610 and the 800 was bigger than the 710, then I figured the 1010 must be bigger than that. And I figured that was the saw I wanted. Well, of course, that was not the way it worked out at all. So the 1010 was always a disappointment to me. Uh, it worked well with, with a 16-inch bar. Um, I used it for, for notching logs, for log, log building, log cabins and stuff. And, and uh, I used it with a, a guide for, for uh, edging timbers, lumber and stuff that I cut with the chainsaw mill with the Husqvarna. 
and uh, limbing and and uh, I've made an attachment for it for cutting angles and stuff for for timber framing and it worked really good for that kind of stuff I had a 24 inch bar on it to start with and it was just uh, too much on it the 16 inch bar worked really good it would work with a 24 inch bar but it was just not up to my standards so I wound up going in and, uh, and to the saw shop in Spokane where I bought it in about 1975-76 and uh, they sold McCulloch's and the 800 cc one whatever it was at the time was just kind of out of my price range a uh, young guy uh, married a couple of kids and uh, house and mortgage car payment and stuff like that I think it was around a thousand bucks for that saw for the for the big McCulloch which was a little steep and a guy was started selling Husqvarna's and he had a 480 there and I think I got it for 350 bucks or something which was a lot more reasonable for me and the 480 was a good saw for me at the time it worked real well with a 24 inch bar and it worked okay with up to a 30 inch 32 inch bar when I started milling it wasn't up to it then and I wound up buying bigger saws for that but the Super Pro 81 would have been the one I would have wanted uh, but they got to be too expensive McCulloch just priced themselves out of business and that's kind of why Husqvarna and still kind of got a foothold in is because the McCulloughs were just too high priced it's a good little saw it's still got more power than almost anything else in its class even this old one like this and it's too much power for this uh, Lewis winch uh, it'll just pull the guts out of this winch so I've had a lot of trouble with the winch it has a shear pin here uh, in this shaft and that was constantly shearing the winch works okay and the earlier ones seemed like they worked they were had a little different um, way to engage the winch and the way it works is it's got a this sprocket and there's a lug welded onto the sprocket and then this pin um, is spring loaded and you push it in it's got a roll pin in it and it goes around into a small slot on the other side and and that holds that pin out which engages that lug and that this this sprocket is turned by the gear housing from the chainsaw and uh, it freewheels like it is now but when this pin is engaged then that lug will come around engage that pin and then that'll turn the sprocket well when you get to pull it on something very heavy and uh, you have the saw hooked on to something and the the winch end hooked on to something and then you've got to make a new pull there's so much tension on this that you can't get this uh, disengaged, this pin disengaged. And uh, so it's a, I, I called the company or wrote a letter to the company and told them that uh, they, they should put something like an Acme thread or something like that in there that you could unscrew and get it to come loose. And they just told me to screw off that they were smarter than anybody else and they didn't need any help designing their stuff. So anyway, I was always kind of disappointed with the, the winch because of that. You have to be careful with this saw if you go to pulling on it with the full power of the saw. It'll just shear that pin and tear that, saw, that winch up. But otherwise, the winch works really good. I've pulled out some big, pretty big logs with it and stuff. Uh, you get um, too much pull on it. Like a, a moose coming through the tundra, the muskeg, and the timber and stuff, it just pulls right along. You get something like a log or something a little bigger, heavier. Um, you took, put a block on something and, and double the line back on it. And uh, it's amazing what it'll pull. It, it works pretty good. So the kids got that out and they're going to use it to pull branches up the hill. And uh, we did a little work on it last night. Um, I made a new shear pin to go in there and cleaned up the holes on this and we had to get a new roll pin to put in that uh, so that this uh, uh, pin would engage. So the saw is running and working and we'll see how it works when the kids get back home from Sunday school and uh, start working. Here's the McCulloch Super Pro 81 and the Lewis winch in action here. They pulled the winch line out so they could get it tight.
That's good enough for now. Where do you have to go get? So there's the mess down there. Those big branches. So you pull the line down there and get pull branches out. See the thing's slow, Carl. Yeah. It's not still, a whole better, lot slow. still better than working, huh? Not a whole lot slower than Karen. Oh, well, or you. <laughs> Shh. That's a secret. I'm telling you that. <laughs>